some new, and I always train towards new people. And then we move past that. You can always call me when we get a little more advanced. Um, but uh, the first thing is it's always good to know that our first, our three top websites. So uh, this is Matrix. Okay. And it's uh, um, the website is uh, matrix.netrix.net. And um, most of y'all have your screens cleaned up like this. So um, whenever you do a home search, what I've always told people to do is kind of remember results, save new auto email, results, save new auto email. So that when we do a search, when you get the results, you hit results, save new auto email. And then at that screen, you plug in her name, something in the subject line, you hit save, you just emailed it. When they open it, their name will show up on that left column there. Um, and then in the middle is almost how you can dummy proof find any property. Um, so who has a property that they bought that was in the MLS? You did, right? Yeah. So let's just act like Leslie called me. I'm driving down the road. She's like, hey, I'm interested in 2220 Plum Court. It's a lease. Yeah. 2220. Um, so the first thing is if she called me and I was driving down the road, I'm going to pick my phone up. Um, you know, oh, did. Bye, bud. All right, brother, be safe. Bye, Leslie. Bye. See ya. Um, so, um, so number one, uh, anytime uh, your phone rings, you should pick it up, obviously. And so she, I'm, I'm driving down the road. Hey, it's Doug with Adijas, really. Hey, my name's Leslie. I got your name from Joe Blow and wanted to see if you could show me 2220 Plum Court. So I'm going to go ahead and set the appointment with or without going in the MLS. But I do have this on my phone. And it's this website just saved as a home screen. So um, I'm going to say, oh, yeah, what's your, is this your cell phone? And make sure she texts and get her email and then ask when she wants to look at it and commit to making that appointment. Um, then I'll get off the phone with her. But right before I get off the phone, I'll say, uh, give me a realtor's name so I can sign them in in case you like the house tonight. I want to make sure I don't take a commission from your friend. And she goes, I don't have a realtor. Then you're good to go. Uh, then I go ahead and log in the MLS and Again, if I knew how to spell plum, which is P-L, plum, then I would just put P-L. And all you have to do is like dummy proof. You just hit search and it'll pull up anything with that, with that 220, 2220 and P-L since 2003. It pulls up everything since 2003. So you can see that it, it got leased in 2021. Okay. So this would actually be a call that could come in because Op City or uh, realtor.com, evy.com, remax.com, they're all showing it probably still active as a lease property. So I've already told her I'm going to meet her tonight at seven. So what I would do is I would click on this and I would look, okay, Little Elm, about 2100, and I'd go for the year. Okay. So then I'm going to hover over search and go residential lease and either quick or detailed. When you go to quick, you have active only marked. And then over here, I would just go 0 2200 because the home that she was looking at was 2050 bucks. And then I would type in here Little Elm. As soon as I type in Little, when it highlights that, I don't have to continue to type. But if you put multiple cities, you need a comma with no space. Okay. So let's say she goes, oh, Little Elm, Frisco. Okay. And you can see there's 30 houses, but I didn't put a year built yet. So I probably go 1997 and a plus sign. Oh, that shows you there's zero. Oh, I didn't put a plus sign. Uh, let me show you. If you just put 97, 1997, that means it's only going to pull up homes in 1997. So you need to put the plus sign after. And so it goes to 24. Okay. Uh, and again, at this stage, we remember three things. Results, save, new auto email. Results, save, new auto email. So you hit results, you hit save, and you hit new auto email. And once you hit new auto email, let's say that Leslie's name is Joe Blow or Daffy Duck, then you already have her in there. If not, she's a new contact. You just hit create new and you put Leslie. Then you put in an email, email, and then you hit save. And then down here in the subject line, because I'm going to, I'm going to be in touch with her. I'm just going to put leases or something like that. Probably not all caps. And now when you hit save, you just emailed it. If you hit ASAP right there, that means that once you hit save, you sent her the initial listings of everything active. And the next second, if somebody inputs a new listing, she'll get it. It doesn't matter what time. So now you're done. And uh, you would text her and say, hey, Leslie, this is Doug. I just want to let you know that home tonight is not available. 
it's got leased about uh, two months ago. I sent you 24 homes that are in Little Elm, Frisco that are 2000 and year built and newer. I still have 6 p.m. tonight. Let me know if you want to look at any. We can probably knock out three or four, you know, before it gets dark. And then, you know, you start a relationship, you know, maybe a video message or something like that. Uh, you know, for sure, your electronic business card, maybe something off Haystack. Uh, and now when you log back into MLS, you're going to see Leslie's name right there. This search tab is the most important. So let's say that we have a buyer that um, wants to look at houses, a home search. You can go residential or you can go detailed. If you go detailed, there's a little more available. So let's say that Leslie said, hey, can you bring up everything uh, 200 to 560 in Frisco? And then uh, as you scroll down, she says, I only want foreclosures. Okay. Well, on the detailed search, you can see it says seller type and you could pick lender REO. And it went from 32 homes to one. And that's indicative of the market. I mean, with homes appreciating, it's pretty hard to go into foreclosure because you could always sell your home and make a profit. So when somebody says that to me, a buyer, I go, you know what? I would normally send you foreclosures, but there's just not going to be that many. Why don't I just send you everything? And, and at least you'll get, I'm not cherry picking what, you know, because there's just no foreclosures right now. And that way it went from one to 32 homes. Um, okay. You can see that, um, let me just uh, show you something real quick. So if I hit results and I just pull up one of these properties, when you see everything that's not bold printed, that's criteria. You can always search by that. Does that make sense? So you got the bold print, but then everything that's not bold, that's a search criteria. So going back to the criteria, if you scroll below the results button, okay, uh, let me just do a, a quick search first. That's, big, that's what I meant to do. So let's say that we went residential quick. Okay. So y'all be doing that on your MLS. You scroll below the results tab. You'll see that right below the results tab, you're either going to have add or add remove. You click it. And the next screen on the left is everything in the entire MLS as a search criteria. So let's say that you wanted uh, masters on the first floor. You could just do master. It's already over on the right. I think that's actually not um, cool. P-O-O, -O, you've got pool, yes or no. So you can move it over. Oh, I, I know what it is, level. I already have it over here. Oh, it's already a search criteria in the quick, that master down. Uh, but acres isn't. See how you just type A-C-R, then you want to move acres and you move it to the right. So whatever you move over to the right, then when you hit the back button, it's going to be underneath underneath your results tab. So I have like a bunch of things underneath my results tab that normally you want to have unless you hit add remove. Now, yours will only say add if you've never added anything. But once you add something, you'll have the option to hit add remove. So if you add something and you don't want it anymore, you select it and you remove it. And now you just moved it back to the left. But you could go down here and it's all alphabetized. And you could go, oh, that's crazy. Like I can move some of this stuff over. Um, but that's everything all the way down to the end, that zip code. So you've got zip code at the end and uh, number carports as the top. And um, so anyway, so that's really the difference between residential quick and detail. Detail just has a little bit more. So um, again, residential quick, you can see that uh, here's the property types that you can pick. Um, somebody might want you to look at condos or might want to look at condos, single family townhomes. Huh? Or a mobile home, or a home. Yeah. Or, or mobile home. The mobile homes are, you know, personal property. So it's kind of tough. And definitely you want to make sure that the buyer is going to be buying it cash. If yeah, not. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, this person wants to rent. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Cause it's a, it's somebody that we know and we have some land in Crum and they wanted us to, um, to, finance a mobile home for them. Oh, okay. But we're tapped out on debt to income. So yeah. Uh, so we would have to buy it cash. So I was like, well, in the meantime, we'll uh build a barn dominium because it benefits us and then rent have them try to find them a rental sure uh, mobile home. So yeah. All right. Well okay so residential and then we have multifamily. Sometimes you'll have people on multifamily. Somebody go, hey, how about a full duplex? So you got full duplex apartments. 
the apartments really, I mean, that's going to be like smaller apartments. The ones that we talk about where you always want your client to sign you in on the phone or in person, those won't be in here. Um, and again, Natasha uh, Dimbla is our apartment go-to. Um, so if you ever want anything about that, just say, um, hey, Natasha, you can get on group me or you can go into back agent and find her. And then uh, so we have a few people. We have Nadia. She's our commercial go-to for right now, uh, NADIA. And then we have uh, Natasha, who's our apartment. And then Leslie uh, has said okay to Section 8, even though it's a pain in the ass. It's a pain in the ass and I'm right. Yeah. So, but I give your name out anyway. So, and then you, you can call me for section eight too. Okay. So, and, and oh, it's so then we need to talk. Okay. Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, talk to you. Somebody reached out to me and they were asking about um, a commission. And I was like, it's up to the landlord. Yeah. Because I've had it before I became an agent. I had a, a land, somebody call me an agent and they was like, well, what about my commission? I was like, well, you can ask your. Uh, I was a landlord. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, you can ask your, your client. I said, but we normally don't. I said, because I don't have a problem finding tenants on my own. Right. So and she, I said, and, and then the last person that contacted me through group me, I was like, well, it's up to the landlord, you know, if they want to do that. I said, it just depends. Yeah. Because most of the time, you don't have an agent looking for a six. Usually they right. don't reach out to By an themselves. Agent. They yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah, for sure. them on their own. So, well, and Google and Google, yeah, yeah and Facebook, yeah, mm -hmm. are good places for them to look. Well, yeah, because mm -hmm. a lot of times you don't get a commission for right. Section Eight. So yeah, you have some on to. Okay, yeah. so let me let me finish. All right, so that's so we got residential, we got multifamily. I think everybody's good with lots of acreage. Uh, again, commercial. Nadia is pretty detailed in residential leases. Um, and then the only other thing I wanted to go over and then we'll, um, I'll answer any questions y'all have is back agent. So I also have this on my phone as the website. Um, I'm just don't really like having it, the app, but you can, and actually there's some MLS apps, but I just don't think they're ever as good as actually putting the website on as a home screen. If you ever want to find anybody, and I think I've done this enough, but I just want to make sure we have new people. Uh, all you do is log in and you hit people and you have options right here. It says first name. And all you got to do is type in AL and you would get everybody with an AL. So you scroll down and go, huh, where's Allie at? Uh, there she is. Okay. Where's Allie? See, everybody's got an AL. And um, so if you just know their last name, you can go, oh, okay. Let's see. That's him. And you'll see everybody with Smith. Okay. Um, uh, as we get into the new year, I'll be putting a new W9 on here. Right now, before the end of the year, if an apartment or uh, in any leases, the broker needs our W-9, um, all you do is go to office at the top, and then you go to documents, and then you hit quick resources, and there's 40. These are all the logos that are approved um, for DHS only, but you can use whatever logo you want. It's just that these are already got all the art done. But as you know, in our company, you can market yourself. Um, but if you scroll down, you've got a couple of things here. We've got an open house sign-in sheet. If you ever want to do open houses, there's a referral form. That's a mu mul multiple, multiple people have used this one. Uh, and then down a little further, there's the W-9. So what I've done is I just send it to myself and keep it on my phone. I think I sent somebody today the uh, lease app. So I have a couple of things I keep on my phone. I keep a uh, lease app blank on my phone, the W-9, um, and a couple other things. And that way I can just fire them off. Um, but if you want to send it directly to an apartment, all you do is hit send and share and you just type in their email. Uh, we have a letterhead there. I just don't really add a whole lot to this because most of us communicate so well through group me that usually like that, whatever y'all need, we get back to you fairly quickly. We do. So we're in 11 cities now, regions. So we're in the Valley. As you go up, we're in San Antonio, Houston, Austin, Waco, now we're in College Station, and then Tyler, El Paso, and then Dallas, Fort Worth, and Collin. So um, I have to have MLS in all those cities. I'm not giving out my MLS to anybody, but um, but the good news is in some of those cities, you don't have to have secondary board dues. So all you have to do is be a, like our agent in the Rio, he has CCAR as his board and only does MLS there. Um, so you can either get MLS there if you have like relatives that enough to where it would make monetarily make sense because you can get their MLS. 
Um, but yeah, we have a great agent in Austin named Travis uh, Brown. Anybody worked with him? No? Yeah, he's really mm -hmm. good. Um, yeah, yeah. So, what? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, before long, we'll be in the whole, we'll, there won't be an area we're not in. I just wait for an agent to let me know. And then what I always have to do is I have to join the board there. Normally, the broker does. And most brokers that only have one agent in an area tell the agent, you pay my board dues and yours, and I'll let you be there. But I don't do that. I pay my own, even if it doesn't sometimes make financial sense. But the, the reason I do it is because I'm hoping to expand. And so I'm hoping that agent will have some interaction with agents and go, oh, you know, I've only paid 225 out of my closing. And, um, you know, and then they inquire and, and I recruit that way. So, um, but yeah, we're in 11. So, you know, and, and again, you'll know that, yeah, his name's Travis Brown. I can send you his information, but yeah, he's super great. Um, matter of fact, uh, Elia Ford just worked with him and had a relative. Um, she just got her, she just got a referral check yesterday. And so, yeah, he'll get it up. Okay. Yeah. I'll send you his, uh, information. Um, so anybody else have, uh, any questions or? I have a question on comps. How do you comp a, a area that has like duplex, single family home, you know, all different types of, uh, mixed use or something mixed, in there. Yeah, kind of mixed use neighborhood, and you know how 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 do you comp? That? Do you have a specific address? Uh, oh, I mean, I can. I can mess around like what I would do. I mean, twenty-one. Uh, then we'll, 20, <laughs> twenty-one sixty-one Springwood. What was it? Springwood. Screen. Spring. 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 Um. <laughs> Nope. Spring. Like, With an S? Yeah. Like 2161? That would have pulled. Is it in the MLS? Yes. Yeah, it would have come up. Or 2165. Right oh, okay. So, no, no, this is good, but that's how I do it. So 2165, and then all you have to do is do an S, and it should. Is it active? Yeah. Yeah, well, it would be up at the top. So it's not the address. But if you know it's Springwood, I can do it. That was a one word. Yeah. I misspelled it. <laughs> so here's the thing. My husband's bringing this stuff to me, and I'm like, there it is. Oh, is, you it, found it? is it 1025? Is it for lease? No, this is a, this is a house, not a, not a lease. Oh, okay. No. Maybe that's why it's not for me. Maybe the one that in the top, no, nice one. So. Springwood Lane. What's the price? Is it that one? In the city? city? No, it's not in Duncanville. It's in it's in Carrollton. I think. Probably in that. So Carrollton, you can you know you can kind of do Carrollton. Yeah, my husband brings this stuff to me when my brain is dead. And I'm like, ten o'clock at night. <laughs> and you think it starts with spring? Yeah. And it says Springwood uh, subdivision as well. Huh. It's been over there. Oh, that's canceled. Well, anyways, uh, what is it? That it's is a, it. Which one? The three ninety nine, the one or the three fifty five? No. Spring leaf? No, not spring. Because it's not available. The only yeah. one active is this okay. one. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So when you have one that's a multiple, uh, 